And hello, here we are to another week and the Tony McClellan Show. So critical reflections with your critical friend. I'm here every week talking about social impact, justice and mobility with some fantastic guests that are here to inspire and empower you with their messages and their stories of how they got to be where they are. So, um, you know, just uh, if you are watching, welcome. And if you're watching later on, then um, I hope you enjoy the 30 minutes, which again is going to be another action packed 30 minutes. So if you are watching now, then drop a note in the chat and just say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And um, we can make sure that you get a shout out throughout the duration of the show. So today we have another fabulous guest by the name of Gillian Whitney, no other than, hey, so how are you, Gillian? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm excited to be here. Good. Good for you. And, um, do you know, I've met this lady, well, actually, we've never actually met, have we? But Feels like we have, but we but virtually, yeah, virtually. Virtually online. And it's funny how you know, over the years, we've got so used to being virtually online that we feel that we know people, even though we haven't met them. But uh, it was a little while ago, I think it was John Esperian. Shout out to John, yeah. you know, who who um, I think he done a shout out. We, you know, we connected. I've been on your live and now it's your turn in the hot seat. And um, I'm loving it. The fact that the, the table has turned so <laughs> Before we get going, and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, Julian, in just a moment, I'm just going to say hi to a couple of people that are joining us right now. So we've got Adama. Please just let us know where you are watching from as well. We've got Melody from Massachusetts. Thank you, Melody, for joining. If you've got any questions ready for Jillian, then please do. So uh, who have we got? We've got shout out to Jillian for her testing of the new video audio captioning feature for recorded videos on LinkedIn. We're going to come to that because there's going to be lots for her to share about her work that she's doing at the moment. And if you are somebody that needs to know more about video captioning, then this is the lady to be following. Yes. Follow Lady Gillian. I like the sound of that. Don't you, Ooh, Love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've got uh, Sarah here and um thank you for joining us miss you too sarah and i believe sarah's in ohio so mm. welcome welcome so julian why don't you just give us a brief introduction so that we know what we're working with here this okay for everybody to get to know you thank awesome. you awesome so i'm a, a lady i'm a video marketing coach a linkedin video marketing coach and i am based in a, sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, where the city never sleeps and neither do I because <laughs> it's 530 in the morning. But it is a great place to live because I am an international video coach. So I work with people all over the world, which is why it's fun to be on lives across the pond. So uh, whether you're in the United States or anywhere else in the world, I love to talk about video. So that's what I'm here for all things LinkedIn video. That is my favorite topic. Okay, so we're going to find out a little bit more about you today, uh, Gillian. And um, I've got a little bit of information that uh, you're always interested in books as a young girl, as a young Gillian, always around the library. And it really aroused your interest. And that's what started, you know, your, your love of wanting to teach and um, support others. So let's start from the beginning. Who are you, Gillian? Where were you born? Tell us a little bit about you, your background, family life, 
uh, just when you were young we're, and we'll move through the years. Okay. So born in Canada, I was born in Wallaceburg, Ontario, Canada, a little teeny town and pretty much raised most of my life in Toronto. And I grew up with a mother that said, get out of the house. It was Saturday morning. I got to clean, get out of the house. And I was an introvert. So it was like, I never knew what to do or where to go. And I found I could go to a public library and that's sort of what started everything. It was a great place to go and I could sit there and read books. So I kind of grew up with Pippi Longstocking and The Secret Garden and, you know, all those wonderful books. And that just allowed me to go anywhere I wanted to go. And through the years, that sort of passion for learning and books and reading and libraries that just stayed with me. So I was really, really bright in school. So I would always be done. And guess where they'd say, why don't you go to the library? Okay. So in the schools, so, I so would, you loved yeah. books and, and yeah. reading. So that was All from a very way. early age that you loved books and reading. Yeah. So, Absolutely. So did you have a favorite book? What was your favorite book that you can remember and share with us? And, and, and tell us why, if you do. Probably The Secret Garden was uh, Francis. I, uh, I forgot her name, but The Secret Garden was probably my favorite kids book to read. And I think that's because both my parents and my two sisters are British. And that's why I'm British born abroad, because I, I actually have four citizenships. And growing up in this family of everybody who's British and English in Canada, we didn't really assimilate with the rest of Canada. We were British living in, in Canada. So, we, you know, grew up with tea and crumpets and all those, you know, traditional British foods. And I think that the secret garden was important to me because I felt like that was a little piece of England before I could actually see England. So I actually went to England at 14. I lived with my aunt and uncle for a time in Yorkshire. So I actually grew up a little bit in Yorkshire and spent some time there. And it was just like the book. It was like I got to England and I went, it's just like it. I'm just not in World War II. But, you know, other okay. than that, it had that green, lush look that, you know, this is pre-internet. So we could only imagine how things work. So that was my favorite book. No, that's that's great. Um, I, I remember reading, you know, Lady Bird books when I was younger. That was the era for for me and um, there were a number of fairy tales in there that uh, you know I could resonate with and even share with my grandchildren now so that's mm. wonderful so you mentioned that you have brothers sisters tell us a little bit about where are you in the family do you have a large family small I'm family the I'm, a, the I'm the baby I'm the baby. So I'm the baby in my family. I have two sisters. One of my sisters was actually my business partner for five years. So that was kind of interesting. And it was actually really fun to bring that together, to be sisters and be in business, always with the agreement that sisters first, business partners second. Okay. And then my other sister is, uh, I'm actually visiting her right now. So she was, I was house sitting for a while because she was cruising. She went to uh, the Greek islands on a cruise. So anyways, uh, really close family. Parents are gone now. So, and then I have, I'm married and I have two grown up children who are traveling themselves. And that is the theme in my family. Um, I'm a digital nomad. And so is, uh, so are my children. They're doing the same thing. They're moving all over the world. I'm, a, I'm moving all over the world, moved to Israel, you know, sight unseen. So that's one of my other citizenships. So that's kind of the theme, but that's what my family has done all my life. They emigrated, their their parents emigrated. We've yeah, been back. So it's, it's kind of like a theme. And it's I don't think that people kind of, uh, you know, recognize that, you know, and there's a little bit about social mobility as well. It's, it's very much that theme, isn't it? That uh, yeah. what your family do and the influence it has on you and those behaviors and the environments that you grew up in. So I'm just going to ask anyone that's listening now, if you have any questions for Villian, Gillian, or if you have a favorite book that you want to share from your childhood, then please do. I'm going to check out The Secret Garden. I've never heard of that one before. And, it's a beautiful uh, book. And, and see how it replicates uh, the UK and England. So, Gillian, um, when, let's go back to when you were younger, okay? Because we, we've come that bit first. But let's let's go back to when you were younger, so when you were younger, what kind of topics were you interested in? I know that you said that your mum would kind of shoo you out of the house to go to the library. It was different in my house because 
my mum would say, come and help me to do the housework, you know, <laughs> come and help to do the housework. And, and we'd done that from a very early age before we would, um, we would, would go out. So uh, what were your other subjects? What were you like in school? And what um, were the subjects you were interested in? So because, because of my love of reading, my love of learning, I was very good in English. So that was kind of my passion. Math, forget about it. You know, it's just like was not born with the math gene. This is like pre-calculator times. And I just did not do well with those kind of topics at all. But I loved English. I loved writing. And I actually was a budding writer. And that's really what my passion was. I also loved drama and theater. So I loved being in, you know, the school play. I would, I always wanted to be like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. And they'd say, you could be a munchkin. <laughs> just so like really, I, you're a creative, aren't you? Yes, you're yes. a creative. And, and even though it's the performing arts and things like that, it leaked into there. You're really a creative with the English and the, the writing as well so um yeah let's uh let's say hi to marcia hello my absolute favorite linkedin ladies tony and Gillian. thank you and you are one of mine too marcia it's so lovely to have you join us here so um what have we got i'm also the youngest child my favorite children's books were snow white and cinderella i lived in my library card and used to sneak and read under flashlight at night wow that is i'm gonna have to get you on here so we can hear about that reading under flashlight. That was really good. Snow White and Cinderella. Yes, Marcia, you shall go to the ball. So, Gillian, um, so you left school and you went into what was it that you went into at that point there? You said that you uh, didn't. So I, be, I, I, I began working in library. So like that's a logical oh, yeah. choice. And so I, I started I should have guessed that library. one. I should have guessed yeah. that one. The librarian, of course. <laughs> and again, this was the days when we had card catalogs. People don't even know what that could possibly mean that you would like pull out a little box and you'd sit there and you'd be, I memorized the Dewey Decimal System. So somebody could come into the library and say, I need a book on such and such. And it would be like, be like, oh, 318. You know, and off I go. I, I knew everything. So I wanted to actually become a librarian and I applied and I didn't get in. I got, I got turned down and I was applying for a master's because I already had a BA in psychology because I'm really interested in people and learning. So I got a bachelor of arts in psychology and that's back when I was in Canada. But then when I moved down to the States, I was getting my master's and I was actually getting my man's master's in anthropology because I had at that time decided, I think I'll be a primatologist. I love Jane Goodall. And I thought, well, that would be kind of cool. I could go live in Africa and I could live with chimpanzees and this would be a really great life. And then one day I was sitting there and I just went, I don't, I don't really want to do this. So I just packed up my I realized that, that it means actually going and living maybe in another country and you wouldn't be yeah. able to be in a library every day, which is your love. No. <laughs> I think you so, didn't like the I, idea of that again. So I, I literally packed up my books and I walked out and I went, nah, this is not for me. And that's when I got in a job in a library. Loved it, worked there for five or six years. And then I somebody said, hey, why don't you apply to get your master's okay, of library before science? Before you carry on there, I'm going to yep. ask two questions. Can you tell us something about library? You know, what's, you know, is there is there a particular, um, is it as silent as it should be in the library? Did you have technology? Did you have access to computers then? What type of people come in there? Would you find younger as well as um, older people coming in? Give us a Everybody. tale about a life, a, a library story or something. Everything under the sun would come to the library. And to be to be honest with you, library, libraries are a refuge for a lot of homeless people as well, mm. because it's a place that you can go anywhere, anytime. I still go to libraries. They're still my go-to place of when I've got a couple of hours to kill, or if I'm driving through a town and I don't know what else to do, I'll go to the library because the library has everything that you can think of. And like, Back then, it's like, yes, that was a place where people could start learning how to use computers. There's so many things in libraries. But one of my best library stories was at one particular point, I was working in what was called telephone reference. And we answered six lines of telephones and we would answer any, we were Google before that was Google. There was no okay, such thing as Google great. then. 
And people would phone in and they would ask us questions. And most of the time I got bar bets. So these were people that were sitting at the pub, you know, in America, we call them a bar. And they were sitting there kind of going, who won the Academy Award for oh. Best Picture in 1962? And for some reason, they knew to call the library. Or I would have people doing crossword so were, puzzles. So they were in a bar quiz. They were in a, yeah, a pub quiz. <laughs> and you get all yes. these random questions. Yes. And I remember I had one question I could not answer. And it was about James Bond, the, a James Bond movie. It was Goldfinger. And they wanted to know if you covered somebody in gold, like the woman who gets killed in the movie, would that really kill you? And I could not find the answer. And we and the guy who I was sitting with, he said, yes, it would. And I said, we have no source unless I had a verified source. I couldn't say yes or no. And it killed me that I could not answer that question. But that was the funniest well, I have a different the theory. I, I, I think that any woman that's covered in gold, it would probably keep her alive. <laughs> And make her young, make her young. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's hear what uh, Melody is saying. Funny how those of us who love to write grew up with a passion for reading. And um, if you're anything like Gillian, she loved reading, lived in the library, and uh, was the source of uh, phone calls for the pub quiz, the bar quiz. You know, thank you so much for sharing that story. I remember the card catalog and Dewey decimal system. Wow, these are things that obviously in the US, I'm not familiar with these. Love the library then and now. I was a secretary of friends of the library. Well done. So that's that's great. I remember my um my granddaughter, my granddaughter, well, she's not really my granddaughter, she's my niece's daughter, and she was so chuffed that she was selected to be the right librarian in her school, you know, um, in her primary school, and she took her duties so seriously recommending books for people for their homework etc so uh that's a lovely story and um, we've got kevin wow thank Yay. you so much for joining us kevin um keep rocking linkedin yes you do keep rocking linkedin too thank you for joining us and do have some questions ready for jillian who i have here for maybe another 15 minutes or so and so, I know that I know that Kevin Kevin D Turner is another book buff because we talk about books ourselves and uh, amongst ourselves in the DMs. And one of the things that Kevin and I like to talk about is we both have books in storage. And that was the interesting thing when I moved to Israel. I had a three story house in Utah. That's where we were living, northern Utah. And we could only take six suitcases and our two dogs. So we had to downsize from a three story house which had like, you know, three or four bedrooms. And I had to sell everything. We sold, we sold our house. We sold all our personal. So, so tell you me, Julian, did you have six suitcases worth of books? No, no, <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't. Cause they're just too heavy. So it was like, I had to just take my iPad, loaded that up and with a gazillion, sick. you know, you know, you got your Kindle books. So nowadays you can do that sort of thing. But the one thing that I could not downsize was my books because I probably had a collection of about 5,000 books in my house. They were everywhere. They were like in the hall. I was like one of those book hoarders that you see on TV. They were like lined up in the hallways. I ran out I of books. Admit, yeah, I must and, admit. Yeah. I and had so books I, as well. Yeah, and I, I had to put them in storage and they're still sitting in storage. I think I have about 30 boxes of books in my storage unit pretty much nothing else you know like I got rid of all the other memorabilia wow my books, books has my books. Do really dominated this conversation with you today Gillian what a turn out that is um I must admit I've got a, a large number of books myself maybe not as much as you but uh, I was one of these people that when I was studying at university rather than going to the university library when it was open the books are out I would just buy all of my course books every single one of them and I would have them you know sometimes I'd go to work and I'd see a colleague that's photocopying a couple of pages and I think well why would you go through that I just bought all of them and then I could read them and access them when I wanted so for me that was really really key let's hear what Marcia's saying my librarian friend Sue used to be afraid that the fire marshal will shut her down due to the amount of children and parents who would attend story time wow there was a homeless man who would hang around. When he passed, we established a garden in his name. 
The sad oh. thing is many of the older librarians were asked to retire and are replaced with younger employees who are not as passionate. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, like you say, so many things happen in the library, story time. And yep. um, and it's and, resources and, as well, isn't it? Resources, oh, yeah. a place for information. Exactly. And, and that's what that was what kind of leapfrogged my career out of the library was the library because this thing called the internet showed up. And when I was working at the library, they said, we need people to learn how to do something called searching online. And everybody looked around and said, I'll stay with the card catalog. And I raised my hand and I said, I'll learn it. And at that time, they pulled me aside. I was the I was the first test guinea pig at our Phoenix Public Library. This was in Arizona. And I learned how to search online. And this was in the days of dial-up, just when the internet got going. And you literally, you would, you would make your search. It was like Boolean searching, really complicated searching. And I was able to learn it really, really quick. And you had to have all your searches ready to go because as soon as you dialed in, the clock started running and you okay. were charged per hour. So I was working for the legal department, the business department, and I would go in and I would search court cases and Lexis Nexus databases, all these things. And I was the fastest person that could get in and get out. And that leapfrogged me into the world of online learning. And I remember when sort of the internet came on and I went, it's like a library, but all the books have been tipped onto the floor and you just have to search around and find everything. And that's when I became the Google goddess. And wow. that name stuck with me for years. And I love learning. I Man, love you know learning. What? That is so insightful, Jillian. And you know, what is coming in my mind is the person that research as well if you're going to research something, if you need to find out something in depth, you are the person as well. You know, yep. you're you're really that person. And uh, I'm sure a lot of your listeners and my listeners too didn't know that about you. So no. let's say hi to uh, Leslie from Southeast USA. Um, I know she's in North Carolina. Thank you for joining, Leslie. Mm. And um, if you have a book story, uh, then do share that with us. So, uh, Kevin is saying, set those books free, Jillian, set them free. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question, Jillian. If you was going to keep one book, what would that be? Big Magic. Th that's the one I actually did a post about last week. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert. She's the one who wrote Eat, Love, and Pray. And Big Magic is a nonfiction book about un unleashing your creativity and not being afraid of fear, getting rid of fear and being that creative person. So we all have a book in us, a painting wow. in us. We all have our creative genius that wants to go out. And a lot of times we're just afraid to let, let it out. Wow. You and, know. You know, and you know, this is a fabulous story. I absolutely love this. And I'm really glad that I had you here in the hot seat because this is really revealing you, Gillian, in the sense of why you do what you do right now, which we shall be revealing very, very shortly. So Kevin's saying, set those books free. Mars is saying, I downsized my book collection. I'm majority digital now. I must admit, I'm, um, I'm one of these people. I like to feel a book in my hand. I like to, you know, touch the paper. However, just when you think about climate change, sustainability, you know, recycling and things like that, you know, and actually having the time to read these paper books, you right. know, I was even this morning thinking about I need to push more towards audio. I can listen while I'm doing mm -hmm. other things and um, maybe I can get through my library a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker. So that's great. And uh, Melody saying, wow, we've got Antonio who is saying, hello, lovely ladies. Thank you for joining us, Antonio. If you have a question about books today for the lovely librarian, Gillian, <laughs> researcher, this is the one. So uh, Leslie saying her favorite book is Think and Grow Rich. Oh, that's lovely. A and I know that Leslie does lots of work around Think and Grow Rich and uh, masterclasses. So uh, a great person to connect with. 
and is also saying I have eight books now, seven nonfiction and one fiction. Um, these are books that have been written. Well done. Well done. Awesome. I'm yet to write my first. Uh, there's more than one book in me, but um, I haven't taken the plunge as yet. Pick one. This business <laughs> of reading 60 books in a year is ridiculous. Okay, so um, that's Leslie's uh, thoughts on it. I'm not sure that I could because when I read a book, I read a, a couple of pages and then I have to put it down and absorb that and manifest in it. And then I have to go back, maybe read that bit again after I've thought about it and then read the next bit. So it takes right. me, you know, it could take me a few days to get through a book if I'm committed to it. So uh, Melody saying the first book I purchased myself was Glinda in fourth grade. I sat oh. my quarter of my lunch money for the week to buy it. My teacher was sweet and I got the extra milk quite a few times that week. Oh, that's a lovely story. That's Thank a you lovely so story. much. Um, uh, Melody, Glinda, I don't know. I've not heard of that book. Is that one that you might know? I don't know that one, except I'm thinking it might be the story of Glinda from The Good Witch in The Wizard of Oz, it, sort of her okay. story, which would be really interesting because, you know, just like everybody has a book in them, everybody has a story to share. And Absolutely. I think that that's, that's really the, the, the fun part of meeting people is people think, I don't have any stories. We all have stories in us. Every single thing, how you got your dog, how you got, you know, why do you live in the town you live in? All these different things are stories that reveal parts of you. Absolutely. And so, you know, it, that's the big thing about becoming a book lover is you become a lover of other people's stories. And we all yeah. do have short stories to share. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, do you remember Highlights and Scholastic? Yes, yes. Okay. See, look, all these little private US jokes. It's not yes. on. Some of us are from the UK. <laughs> We're sorry. Are you really sorry, Gillian? Not really. You know. Yeah. Okay, so... It, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm well-versed in all these different cultures. So I always kind of feel okay. like... You know, I know what chuffed means, you know, and I know that LinkedIn always edits that out. They think it's a swear word because they're American. So LinkedIn, the the, the auto captioning police, if you say chuffed, it, it bleeps it out. Okay. Right. So let's get these last few comments in. And uh, Wayne Dwyer spent a whole year with one book, the Teo, um, as you say, Tony Gillian, Whitney and Weekly Reader. Daily, daily. I read, I read daily daily i spelled it wrong it was it was gilda not gilda. Glinda. oh probably gilda radner maybe gilda okay. radner okay now you're showing off jillian whitney okay. sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's all right showing off so loud it's fine it's fine okay so marcy's saying that she didn't mean to exclude me okay that's absolutely fine i'll let you off the hook today marcia just be once. more inclusive with these comments now no i'm just joking and uh We've got Melody. One of my favorite books is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Very so, popular. Very popular. Okay. So now, Gillian, Whitney, there are a couple of things I want to cover before we wrap this up. Um, that means wrap up. So can you cover and tell us very, very briefly, because there was something else that caught me, apart from the fact that you're a librarian and this has kind of shifted the whole, the whole 30 minutes. <laughs> But I'm sure some people watching must be curious as to what's all this about four citizenships? Just take us through that really, really quickly. And then we're going to hear about the rest of the story. OK, so so this, the four citizenships, it's very unique. There's not many people that are quad citizens yeah. born in Canada, British born abroad because of my parents. Then I moved to the United States after university and became an American citizen after living here for 10 years. And then when my kids grew up, my husband and I said, what are we doing in this house? Let's just go live somewhere else. And we decided that we could go to Israel. So we moved to Israel. Uh, not a good time to go during a worldwide pandemic. A year and a half later, came back to the United States. And now we're kind of of no fixed address as we bebop around the country. So based in Las Vegas, going back there in another week. So, um, you know, th that's basically the story. And in a so nutshell. you're well-traveled. You've got four well citizenships. Well-traveled. Yep. And that is the theme um, throughout, you know, your, your story. So can I just ask you very briefly, just based on some of what you shared right now, 
you know, what is your message? If you were going to share a message with some of the people that are listening, watching or watching back on the replay later, what would a message be um, that you're going to share? You can learn anything. You can learn anything. It's never too late or too early to learn anything. And my love of learning is what got me to fall in love with Google, all things Google. That led me to a career of SEO and online, you know, online marketing, but I hated SEO. I didn't like SEO. So then I decided what was the part of SEO. And that's when I became in love with video marketing because okay. I found that video was what kind of leapfrogged people to the top of the Google search results. Because if you do enough Google searching, you know how to get people to the top of Google. Video is it. And that's when I locked on to video and then I decided to niche down or niche, if we like to say niche, I decided to go all in on LinkedIn video. And that's what I recommend. Learn, learn one social media platform first. Go deep. Okay, before then go we, wide. we get into that piece uh, too much, Jillian, let's just work on the message. So the messages that you're giving to people based on your story so far is that you can learn anything, anything at any anything. time. Yeah. I'm not saying that you need to go to the library or anything, but, you know, continue learning. And I'm going to add on to that by saying that uh, when you stop learning, you stop growing. So that's oh, just something that, so I, that I, I say quite frequently. So yep. that's the message for the listeners. Now, if we're going to think about the book that you talked about, which was your favorite book, um, could just remind us what it was called? The Secret Garden. No, no, no. The, not The Secret Garden. The one that you talked about a week ago, the one that you would hold on oh, to. Oh, Big Magic. Big, Big, Big Magic. Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. It's a fabulous book. And it's yeah. all about our unleashing our creativity. Right. So okay. So that's, so that's another piece, isn't it? So we've gone yes. from being a librarian, loving to read. Thank you, Mum, for, for turfing you out on a Saturday morning to do housework because you found yourself in the library. That's where you were enriched. You developed your learning in there, your love of the library. You didn't get one particular role, so you went for the role of a librarian. You got that. Then you turned into the quiz master, the, you know, when you watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and your <laughs> Oscar friend, it was it was Gillian. Gillian, the librarian, is the person that we're going to ask. And uh, you had that fabulous question about being covered in gold uh, that, uh, that was the one question that beat you. And uh, so that was a question from 007. But you, desire, yes. you, you had this desire to continue learning. You developed, from, um, uh, moved onto the computer, turned into Mrs. Google, Gillian the Google Queen. And uh, from there, you, with your love of books, you've identified this book that talks about unleashing your, your creativity online. That's what took you to being an online video coach. So yep. just let's just conclude now and tell people what it is that you do and um, why it brings you so much joy. I, I make video easy peasy. That is my theme on uh, uh, for business. It can be easy peasy and it solves the problem of video doesn't have to be hard. I can teach you. You can learn. Everybody can learn this. Doesn't matter how young, how old, we can all learn to do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Wow. And, uh, you know, Jillian, so Jillian does video easy peasy. And um, I know that we've even done some lives and some audios together, haven't we? Talking yep. about people getting confidence to go on camera before we came online in the green room, we were talking about, you know, um, doing it, doing this, because I've been doing this now for not sh just short of two years every week on a Monday. And sometimes you just click the buttons and you think, well, actually, yeah, I'm good to go. But there are the odd times when you do actually have to pay attention. <laughs> you actually I have to pay attention. Otherwise, you get a bit excited and press the wrong thing. But, right. um, but you survive. You survive. Yeah. And it's, yes, it's about fine. not, it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? It no. doesn't have to be perfect. And sometimes if I make a mistake and I'm online, I might say something like, I just wanted to check you were paying attention. Hey. <laughs> you know, That's I was <laughs> just checking that you were paying attention. So let's, uh, let's see what we've got here. So 
Um, where are we? So we've got Marcy. I love you, ladies. Thank you for getting my day off to a great start. It's always lovely to have you join us here on a Monday. Love the No Bad Life, Gillian Whitney. You live. Always stay hungry to learn. ABL, always be learning from Marcia. Love it. And we've got Suzanne Brown. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Just seen this notification. We'll be needing to watch from the start. There's always one, and it's usually me. Don't worry. You can catch it on the replay. And do reach out and connect with Gillian if you are not already connected. So uh, what we've got, we've got Gillian. I had no idea about some of this stuff. How cool. Did you also know, Suzanne, as you joined late, that this lady used to be a librarian? And um, <laughs> if you're ever on who wants to be a millionaire, she is going to be the one. Call me. That if you ask her, call me. I'll call a friend. <laughs> As long as the question's not about being covered in gold, she should be okay. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, she should be okay. So on that note, I'm just going to ask you, Gillian, what a fabulous half an hour you've just given us. And are there any real real messages or takeaways from, um, from our, our little discussion there that you want to share with the audience? Because this particular Tony McClellan show is about empowering and inspiring others to be so you shared a couple of really great books those that are listening have shared some really great titles as well and is there any key message that you want to leave the listeners with just take the way that you can get some of tony's fairy dust today by starting off your week with us and just know that we can empower ourselves to do anything we can we all have that story in us and we all matter and just just know we're just part of that wonderful book collection in the sky we're all we all got a story to share thank you so much and i'm just gonna top that off by saying that um you know there is one thing that we can all qualify to be without further study and that is ourself you know mm -hmm. when we stop learning we stop growing so keep learning and keep growing and um i've loved this 30 minutes and we've just gone over and i just want to say on that note Thank you to everybody that uh, that joined us. And I came in at that moment. Thank you. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Adama, Melody, John, Sarah, uh, Kevin for joining in and the lovely comments. Antonio, Leslie, who else have we got here? Leslie and Suzanne that contributed and the others that were watching online. I hope you got some real value out today and if you feel that you are stuck in a place of I want to get on video but I just don't know how then Lady Gillian Whitney <laughs> I like the sound of that could maybe the person for you so do reach out to her and uh thank you so much Gillian it's been a pleasure and um thank you I shall see you all next week so bye for now Bye, everybody. Thank you for spending time with me and my guest today on Critical Reflections with your critical friend. Today, you got just a very, very small sprinkling of Tony's fairy dust. But if you'd like more, then do reach out for speaking or hosting. It's TonyMcClellan.com. For social impact, social justice, or social mobility, check out our work at FirstLifeGroup.com. I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, feel encouraged, be inspired, be empowered, and make a difference. Bye for now. Thank you.